of Ukraine's president is visiting Finland, NATO's newest member, sharing a border with Russia. He's just been speaking in the wake of those accusations from Russia of a drone strike on the Kremlin. Let's hear what he had to say. We don't attack Putin or Moscow. We fight on, on our territory. We are defending our villages and cities. We don't have, you know, enough weapon for this. That's why we don't use it any, anywhere. For, for us, that is the deficit. We, we can't spend it. And we didn't attack Putin. We leave it to tribunal. Mm. <clears throat> then we have Lisa Lott Lindstrom as Tvete. Yes, I'm Lisa Lothinström from the Swedish Public Broadcaster, and my question is also to President Zelensky, just a little follow-up on, on what you just said. Why do you think uh, it is in the interest of President Putin to accuse Ukraine of trying to assassinate him? Thank you. Well, let me explain it to you. It's very uh, Russia has no victories to report. He can no longer motivate his public. He cannot send his servicemen to die just like nothing happens. He has no victories on the battlefield. The second army in the world is lost. They find themselves incapable of occupying Ukraine. They've got hard time from us, and now he has to motivate somehow those people. He has to keep them going forward, like Wagnerites, ex-convicts uh, who cannot go back because they will be shot by the blocking squads. This is their current position. This is what is happening in reality. Our top story right now, Moscow is claiming that Ukraine tried to assassinate President Vladimir Putin with drone strikes on the Kremlin last night. Videos are circulating, purporting to show the alleged attacks. But at this stage, we cannot verify them. Here they are. Take a look at that drone. Moscow is calling the alleged strikes a terrorist act and says it reserves the right to take retaliatory measures. Ukraine denies any involvement, saying it does not attack other countries. We've got team coverage on our story standing by for us. Um, I'd like... We've got... I've just got confirmation that Matthew Chance is with us from London and we've got Nick Robertson as well in eastern Ukraine. Great to have you both uh, with me today. Um, Nick... I want to start with what we've been hearing from Ukraine in particular, distancing themselves um, from this attack. But I, I want to sort of take a step back here and, and talk about the potential impact of these accusations and the information that we're getting through from the Kremlin at this stage. Typically, in the past, the Kremlin has said things that it's then used to act upon uh, things that have proven not to be true, but have given them the pretext for an attack, a false flag operation. Ukraine appears concerned that this may be such an instance. They feel that perhaps the Kremlin will use what happened over the Kremlin with these two alleged incidents with drones, 16 minutes apart over the Kremlin last night, to use that as a pretext for some sort of attack on Ukraine. They're concerned because Russia has a track record of doing that. Ukraine says it is not connected to these drone incidents. Um, it says it will use all means to def on its own territory to defend its own territory. It describes the, uh, Russia's claims that this was an assassination attempt on President Putin as part of Russian trickery that they suggest is the Kremlin trying to drive up support for the war in Ukraine ahead of the very important May Day celebrations outside the Kremlin on Red Square, very big annual celebrations on the 9th of May that uh, celebrate and commemorate the huge loss of life, ten million, tens of millions of Russians who lost their lives during the Second World War. Um, that This is the Kremlin, President Putin, trying to sort of build up support for that parade, for the war in Ukraine. Uh, 
But I think when you, when you do step back and try and analyze the situation, it is a particularly tense situation because Russia is expecting the possibility of Ukrainian counteroffensive. And there have been over the past couple of weeks a noticeable uptick in the number of incidents that have, that have targeted Russia's supply lines and ammunition and fuel depots inside of Russia, but near the borders with Ukraine. Um, so when you take that picture in its totality, um, you, Ukraine, whether or not it was involved, the fact that the Kremlin escalates whatever it was to the level of an attempted assassination of President Putin, Russia's taken this up to the maximum level that it can. And that's what would cause the concern of how Russia yeah. may then use this incident um, for its own purposes. Uh, Matthew, you know, we're, we're looking at p potential scenarios here. Well, here's what we do have. We have a video that we haven't been able to, to verify, but this is what Russian media is using right now. The Kremlin saying there was an assassination attempt on Vladimir Putin. The Ukrainian saying we're distancing ourselves from this. But the messaging, I guess, the underlying message to Russians is that the war has come to Russia. It has breached the Kremlin. Yeah, and that's why it's so extraordinary that if this is a, an operation, a sort of false flag operation that's been set up by the Russians, it's an extraordinarily risky one because it is reminding Russians uh, that this war is very real and that it is coming back to bite them, as it were, right in the centre of the capital. Uh, and the fact that this imagery is now on Russian television uh, being watched by millions of people around the country is a remarkable sign of vulnerability and weakness on the part of the Kremlin. The fact that a drone or two drones could strike at the symbolic and political and geographical heart of the Russian state is, is an extraordinary moment, I think, that, that will really ram home to people around the country in Russia uh, that this war is in a desperate, desperate um, uh, situation. Um, now, in terms of what the Russian response will be, well, I mean, clearly the Russians are characterizing this as an assassination attempt against the, uh, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. I mean, and if it is real, by the way, then, you know, they have every right, I think, uh, to uh, take this extremely seriously. This is the presidential palace. This is where Vladimir Putin has an apartment, although he wasn't said to be there at the time. And it is where he works in the daytime. It's where his official offices are uh, for the most part of the week. And so, um, you know, it is a, 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 if it is a real attack, and the pictures look real to me, I have to say, then it is a, a, a huge coup. Uh, on the part of whoever carried it out uh, at striking at the Russian state. Now, in terms of who carried it out, the Ukrainians have distanced themselves from this. Um, they often do distance themselves from attacks that take place inside the territory of the Russian Federation. Uh, there are partisans, partisan groups, Russians, who are active increasingly inside the country. And as Nick Robertson was um, uh, you know, kind of listing there. There have been a number of attacks in the past week against railway infrastructure targets, against an oil uh, storage facility in the south of the country as well, uh, which are inside Russian territory. Now, some of these could have been carried out by uh, Ukrainian secret services, presumably. Um, others could have been carried out by these partisan groups who are increasingly active and who are striking uh, at, at various targets inside uh, the Russian uh, Federation, sometimes potentially with the assistance of elements of the Ukrainian state as well. Well, the Ukrainians have been at pains to, to deny any involvement in any of these uh, kinds of incidents. One of the reasons the Ukrainians are denying it so ferociously is that there has been an absolute red line drawn by its main sponsors in the West, particularly the United States, that it doesn't want to see Ukrainian attacks taking place inside the Russian Federation, inside the territory of Russia, um, in case that elicits a much more dramatic response uh, from the Kremlin. Now, uh, it was interesting to hear what uh, Antony Blinken, the US Secretary of State, said a few moments ago when he was asked about the possibility of Russia, of, uh, sorry, of Ukraine uh, striking at targets inside of Russia. He, he had a much more soft attitude uh, towards that possibility, saying he was going to leave it up to the Ukrainians to decide how best to fight the war. That's a significant departure from ruling out uh, any weapons being used uh, to strike inside uh, the Russian Federation. So it just looks like all these ways of sort of putting additional pressure on Russia um, as Ukraine prepares 
what is meant to be a spring offensive, but is quickly turning into a, a summer offensive to retake Ukrainian land uh, inside their country from Russian uh, occupation forces. And this drone strike on the Kremlin, if it's real, and if it's not made up by the Russians to kind of uh, provide justification for some kind of attack inside, inside Ukraine, then that's a, a further example of how that pressure is building.